Alrighty guys, welcome back and it is time to strap in. Uh, as you saw from the title, this is going to be the absolute pinnacle of Bird Helvisker's guides for you guys. I'm going to cover everything from artifact card sets to teams that you want to use to different gimmicks on each floor and phase recommendations, the whole lot, right? So um, I can pretty much clear the bird and Helvis scale with ease across multiple different teams. Um, I haven't collected all Holy Relics yet, but I'm up to 17. So there's a little bit of my credentials. I don't know if you guys need them, um, but this is not really a concern for me anymore. This one's just a bit more of a fun boss. So I basically, yeah, like I said, I want to cover everything I can. I'm going to try and do it in one take for you. Um, I have no idea how long this is going to be. Um, so I really hope this is beneficial and is helpful for a lot of you, maybe new and returning players, or maybe people that just want to understand the boss a little bit better. Um, but I'm I'm here for you guys. And uh, look, if you do enjoy it, please, you know, do all the, the like, the thumbs up, the subscribes, the whole, the whole shebang. Um, but let's get stuck into it. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover off teams, right? So... There are basically two types of teams you build for the bird, right? One is a taunt team and one is a death damage team. I'll explain kind of a bit more detail when we get to the floor, but it's all to do with floor two, phase two, right? So I personally like to use the death damage team because I do have uh, the one Escanor now. So he is really beneficial for this. But um, you definitely want to use a taunt team for potentially the second phase if you don't have the one Escanor. If you have people like the one Escanor built and Trader Meliodas or Purg Purgatory Meliodas built, then definitely, definitely use those guys. Um, otherwise, use a taunt. Now, I will show both teams in terms of like a build for them. Um, but what I'll probably do is I'll probably show the death team to actually use it because uh, the like it makes it probably requires a little bit more mechanical like just knowledge when you get to the second phase um so we'll do that but let's start with the taunt team so with any team you make for helvis gear uh, i'm just gonna say the bird because i'm gonna keep butchering that but any team you make for the bird you want to have magelda right like i don't really recommend attempting this if you just don't have magelda right i've done a bird a, like a bird team build video before and I say the same thing then always use Megelda right now Megelda is your support unit her passive specifically works for the bird right and her holy relic is the first holy relic you want to get um, now if you guys don't have the holy relic don't feel bad if you can't make it much further past floor one oh, sorry yeah floor one right so I actually sat on floor one and farmed floor one right this one here all the way until I got Magelda's relic and then I could just farm all the way up to floor three so her relic is really really strong and like quite over not overpowered but quite underrated in terms of if you don't have it to if you do have it right so again if you're sitting on floor one don't stress too much right so Magelda is the first hero that you're going to use right Second hero, let's use let's do a taunt team, right? So the very next thing I want to do is have a taunt. Now there are two types of heroes that there's two heroes that I'd recommend for the taunt unit. One would be Festival Deanne, right? And one will be uh, wherever she is, Matrona, right? Now Matrona is pretty much not built for these birds, but built for the demonic beast. But it is very very helpful, right? The reason is because when she loses her HP, uh, she will get increase your regeneration rate for everyone so you get some very good passive healing and her level one attack card does remove buffs which can be helpful later on in the game when the uh when the, the bird buffs itself right and it gives like evade and stuff like that uh, her taunt also lasts for three turns which is really beneficial so if you're using matrona matrona is like a good if you're just going for like straight damage right and you think you can just kind of brute force your way through it deanne is a really good choice um because she does more damage than matrona does uh but her taunt only lasts for two turns right so look if you wanted to go purely something specifically like my original team was Miguelda, matrona and then i had green arthur and trader Melly, right so that was my original team for clearing floor one um like i said deanne does a bit more damage but doesn't have a removes buff and 
her taunt only lasts for two turns. So I'd only say go Deanne if you're confident you can clear through like a phase relatively quickly, right? Because the longer you get stuck in a phase, the more buffs, the more debuffs he puts on you, the more buffs the bird gets, it just becomes quite painful. So if you're still struggling a little bit with damage output, then go Matrona because she'll heal your team and get rid of all the buffs the longer you hang around. Or if you can clear a bit faster, go Deanne because she'll help with your damage dealing as well. So let's say we're using Matrona, right? Um, the link for Matrona, the link that you want is you want to have blue Tarmiel link. Now I had this question in my other videos, you don't want to use red Tarmiel link. The reason you don't want to use red Tarmiel link is because, where is it? If they attack twice within the same turn, it restricts all skill effects, right? So that will include <laughs> the effect that stops and stops the bird from one-shotting you with a taunt on phase two. So again, this will make sense when we get to the, that part, but you basically need to use blue Tarmiel if you're going to have a taunt unit, right? If you're not going to have a taunt, you can use red Tarmiel. I use red Tarmiel, but if you're going to taunt, blue Tarmiel. Cool. Can't stress that enough. Alrighty, because otherwise you will just get you'll just get one shot on that phase two, right? Which would get very annoying. Um, Next is, you can either go like a support utility hero here, or you can just go two DPS units. These last two are kind of up to you guys. Like I said, I am a big, big fan of using Green Arthur, just because if everyone's alive, you get an increase by 35% of damage and a decrease by 35%, right? So um, he's kind of like, I don't want to say the poor man's festival gother, but because I really like Green Arthur, but you'll see a lot of people use green uh, go through in this slot instead because this increases attack related stats and max HP every time we use a skill, right? So by 10, 10%. And this Holy Relic will increase all your attack related stats by 25%, right? So this is a really good support unit as well. Um, other support units you could use is like Brunhild, right? Because she does have a power strike card for the final phase of uh, floor one um, and a healing ultimate, which is really helpful. Um, what else could you use? Those would probably honestly be my top picks. Um, in terms of like the supporting units on top, you can maybe use Freya as well. If you've got Freya, uh, he's got a death ult, which is nice. And he does have a decent passive, which boosts all the stats of, of everyone. Um, I mean, if you're building a demon team, you could even use like Esterosa for his darkness, but I'd, that's very niche. I wouldn't recommend that. I'd probably go Freya, uh, Green, Green Alpha or Festival Gotha or Brunhild, right? So Brunhild can kind of play in terms of two different slots. So she can be a support, but she can also be a DPS because she has a power strike card, right? So you want a hero that hits hard for the final phase of the first floor because it has insanely high defenses. So having like a power strike card or a you know, Trader Meliodas Amplify card or, or something along those lines, you definitely, definitely want, right? So um, let's put Brunhild in and I'll talk about links for everyone else in a second. Um, and then finally, like my pick is always Trader Meliodas, uh, just his passive that allows you to stack single targets to reduce damage is really, really strong, um, as well as the ability to, um, you know, obviously have an Amplify card which can hit hard and a decent ultimate as well. So Trader Meliodas is usually my pick here. Alternatives, again, is like Brunhild, and then you could have a support unit of like Freya. Uh, you could use the, the one ultimate. Um, you could... You could kind of use Kusak if you've got Kusak because um, his, his ultimate is a power strike and he has a strong cleave card, but you would need kind of another supporting DPS like a Brunhild or something else like that as well. Basically, you just want a hero that hits really hard. Um, if you have a really built Sariel, you could do, almost use Sariel as well because you have a power strike card there, but basically a power strike or an amplify card from a strong damage dealer that you have, right? Uh, Purgatory Melee also works in this slot as well for a damage dealer. You pretty much want to get to get him to have true magic, and then you can use his main attack card as well, right? So that is your kind of like taunt team, right? So this is a team that you want to have. You've got Magelda, you've got a taunt unit, and then you've got two, like a support damage and then a damage unit as well, right? Uh, for units, you want to put your DPS. You want to give Red Sariel link if you're not using Red Sariel, right? Wherever he is, there he is. Um... And then for this other, these other two units, like your, your Magelda and there, you basically just want to have your highest alt, highest duped ultimate, 
hero. So if you've got like six out of six alts, use use those, right? Make sure you use those guys. Um, so where are we? Where are we? Um, where's a six out of six ultimate? There we go, Derio. That'll do. Right. So this is going to be your initial setup, right? Um, now, equipment-wise, in terms of like levels and what I recommend, pretty much you always want to have at least level 90 fully super awakened, and at the very, very least, max five-star SSR gear. Um, if not, I would recommend UR gear for everyone, right? So I need to put some pieces on that Tamil. Um, but, you know, so these are my associate links. So you've got five-star plus five gear for everyone, and then UR gear for all your main units, right? So... Again, this is like your taunt team. Um, the team that I like using the most now is basically a death rush team, for lack of a better term, just because it's a bit faster and you do a bit more damage, right? So I still keep Trader Melee as my main damage, but rather than having a taunt unit, what you actually do is you have a hero that can do death damage. And again, we'll explain it when we get to phase two, floor two. Um, but you can use... Uh, the one ultimate you can use Freya with as long as you get his ultimate you can use the original the one as long as you get his ultimate right um, but basically you need to use someone with death damage right so I'll use that one instead now even though there's no attribute advantage the bird is red so it'll always attack green units uh, don't know why that's just the way it is so the team that I have find the most commonly that I use, as you guys have probably seen from my last video, is I will use, um, where is it? Where's, where's my green Arthur? I always lose, lose heroes, don't I? Oh, if I, hold on. There we go. Okay. So I will always use green Arthur here and I will give him red Tamiel link because I don't care about having the, the taunt up because I'm not doing a taunt team. Right, so this is just red tarmiel is just a better link compared to blue tarmiel if you're not doing the taunt. Right, and then for if I'm using the one Escanor, I will always use uh, blue uh, Merlin for just the crit chance link. Right, so Miguel is all your support and your heals, two DPS heroes, and then you have a tank, right, or a uh, a tanking unit. So support utility unit, right, because he improves, he gets the damage boost as well. Um, and then you've got almost same thing for if I use, you know, Green Gotha, right? Uh, you can also, again, use Brunhild if you want for increased damage and the heals. Uh, I just find he's great just to chill out and, and do what he needs to do, right? Um, so this is, this is like the team that I've always used that has been in my previous videos, right? And they, again, you've got full UR gear on everyone. And then on the associated links, you've got five star plus five gear. Um, in terms of total CC that you want to do this fight with, um, you probably want, I don't know, I could do the first floor with about 200 to 220k CC, and that was when I used Green Arthur, and then I used Red Matrona here, wherever she is, there she is, in this slot, and then I had Blue Tarmiel Link on her as well. So I could clear first floor consistently with that, and then once I got... Um, the relic I could continue on, right? Because Matrona was basically the tanking unit. Arthur was a support and utility with extra DPS. And then my melee was just there to, to dish out the damage, right? So that's kind of how you build a team, right? So you can use a taunt unit there. You can use green Arthur or anything, and then you need a domain damage dealer. So I'm going to use this team again, just for sake of argument. You know what we'll do though? We'll actually... Yeah, we'll, we'll leave this. We'll leave this. We'll, we'll show you guys with this team. Um, if you guys do want to see any other team in action, let me know. But I will just use this team for the sake of argument. All right, and again, that's my equipment. Next is artifacts. So the best artifact sets you can have is basically any demonic beast artifact card set. So this one is increases my basic stats by 10%. The other one is increases single target damage, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't have it yet. Um, I am working towards it. Um, and then the other one that you want is, is an allies debuff from a skill restores 5% of their max HP, right? So every time the bird like makes you bleed or anything like that, you'll heal back. So Best card set is one of the Demonic Beast card sets. Then this is the second best. And then from there, none of the other card sets really do that much. So I'd recommend just going for max combat class. Right? So, 
that's how to build a team. That's the gear sets that I'd recommend on all the heroes. That's the levels I recommend having. Total CC, again, doesn't matter too much as long as you're kind of, at the very least, at the early to mid 200Ks, you should be you should be able to do it. Won't be as easy, but you should still be able to do it. Um, and that's the artifact card set. So, again, I'm going to use this team just because not everyone's going to have Festival Gotha, not everyone's going to have Festival Deanne, but I'm pretty confident that most people by now should have Trader Melee and the one, because I think everyone's summoned for that. Instead of Trader Melee, if you want to, you can also use Brunhild, like I said, right, with her Power Strike cards. She's very strong there. Um, and if you don't have the one ultimate, you basically you can just use like Freya, but you need to save his death ult for the second phase, right? But this is the team we're going to use. So let's get into it. This is going to be a long video. Okay, so floor one, phase one. Uh, let's jump into it. Let's just get started. So the thing to notice on the first kind of two phases of the first floor, there's not too much like kind of gimmicks or anything. The whole idea that I'm trying to go for is basically just get Escanor's passives as well as Melee's passives up, right? So Melee's passives requires two single targets attacks each time and it'll build up his passive and then Escanor just basically needs to attack to increase his passive, right? So my start always pretty much looks the same is I get start with an Escanor card to get his passive two single targets to build up melees, and then um, just an AoE card. So I'll use Arthur's for now, and then next one I'll probably just use is, is Trader Melees. Alright, so these first two phases, so the green health bar and the blue health bar, literally just focus on dishing out damage, right? Now, if you're using this team, or you're using a, a Trader Melee or a, or a Brunhild, or whatever it is, you want to save your single target melees cards, and your single target uh, Escanor cards for the final phase of this one, right? Now the final phase of this one is the, it's probably one of the most difficult phases actually in this whole, all three floors of this bird, right? So I'll explain once we do this. So I'm gonna heal up just to proc some of Magelda's passive. Uh, so remember, if you don't have her Holy Relic, she will only give you a passive increase in, st in stats if you fully heal them, right? So keep that in mind. Don't just heal up to like three quarters, make sure you fully heal. If you have the Holy Relic, you'll clear debuffs and get that anyway, but always worth healing up to full if you can. So again, we're going to heal. I can't really do two single targets, so I'm just going to go in with all the AoEs. Um, it's not really worth it, at least in my opinion, doing a single target if you can't do a two, if you can't do a double single target, because although Melee will get the all stats stack himself, he won't get the the, def the, def the damage reduction stack for the rest of the team, right? Cool, so saving up these cards. So I kind of really want to get to the point where I have Magelda's ult, uh, and then a silver finger, at least one or two silver melee cards, and then uh, ideally one of these two ults as well. So again, I'll explain in a second. So first we're gonna do two single targets, and then I'm gonna do Escanor, and just get rid of that. So again, these two phases, just focus on damaging them, right? So, uh, yeah, at least two, one to two silver Trader Melee cards, single targets, and then preferably at least one silver finger for Escanor, and then a couple of ultimates as well should get me through the final phase. Um, okay, again, I don't get stacks that I wanted, but that's okay, we'll, we'll heal up. So, now, uh, for all the people that are running a taunt, specifically Matrona's taunt, uh, the next phase he will take away buffs and Matrona's Taunt is classified as a buff. So if you're using Festival Deanne, it's not a buff, it's a stance, so she'll be okay. But if you are doing it, uh, he takes away all buffs. So he, you want him to focus on not Traitor Meliodas, because if you take away all Traitor Meli's buffs, he becomes pretty close to useless, right? So uh, for example, the bird will take, on, will take off Arthur's because it's red and green. Um, but yeah, make sure you have at least one or two Matrona buff cards if you can going into the next phase, the purple phase, because he'll every turn he'll take off that taunt. So you don't want Trader Melee losing his buffs. Okay, so we're gonna heal up again just to get some, just to get some more stacks. I'm gonna do that, that, and then I'm actually gonna merge these cards. So we've been pretty unlucky so far with cards, but that's okay. We should be okay. Oh, look at Arthur, dishing out the 50k damage. Alright. 
and then Melee just rocks up with 200k AoE. Alright, sweet. So again, this phase, if you've got Matronas, he's going to take away buffs, which you'll see. Um, but what I am going to do is I want to keep Miguel's ult. So Miguel's ult, even at like 2 or 3 out of 6, you should be okay to do damage cap at next floor, at next phase. Um, but obviously mine's 6 out of 6, so that's that's not, that's nice for me, I guess. Um, so I'm going to do... I want to get rid of as many cards as possible here. So I'm kind of going to do... I wouldn't recommend doing that because you obviously want to save a heal card, but I'm pretty confident in the tankiness of my team. Um, so, and 15737 is damage cap on this floor, right? So you want to make sure you have a couple of strong attacks to get through this floor or just basically tank the... So see how I've got full buffs on everyone? Cancelled my buffs, right? So I don't want that to happen on Meliodas. Um, nine times out of ten, he will do it on either Arthur or Megelda, which is fine. I just don't want to lose them on the one or Melee, because they're basically my main my main damage dealers, right? So ideally you want to be, I mean, getting a little bit a little bit s screwed over in terms of RNG here. Um, but that's okay. So we're basically going to hang out at this floor until we get the cards we need to go into the final phase, right? You want to be saving your cards for this final phase, because like I said, his damage is, is kind of redonkulous. So I think with an ultimate, we should be okay. Um, I'm hoping. So I'm going to heal up. Use that to get another melee stack. And then that should, in reality, finish this off. Cool, so Miguel got they all got more stacks again. And this should be enough. Cool, again, there's damage cap, nice. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect, another, another silver finger. So, I've got plenty to kind of deal with this, but I don't know if it's going to show me. So his defense is 526,000, right? He gets an insane defense buff. So you need some really high damage dealer. So Power Strike is perfect for this, right? So any hero that uses Power Strike uh, and basically Escanor and Melee, just because they hit so hard, will uh, will help with this as well. So first thing I'm going to do is going to Power Strike because that's going to give me guaranteed damage cap of 156k. Uh, then I'm going to use Escanor Alt, Finger, and then Melee. All right, so this will probably not kill unless my skill is only one out of six. So that's why that ult was pretty average. I'm hoping this does a decent chunk of damage though. Yeah, so even Escanor didn't do that much, right? So that's why I really like to rely on melee here because with all his amplify stacks, he does a lot. He really does. So you've really got to brute force your way through this part. Now it's only on for three turns. But you really want to get it done in these three turns because if you don't, the next one is basically he gets an attack increase and you get a grey recovery disable buff. So as soon as he attacks you, you can't heal through it and it really stuffs you up for the next floor. So if you can, make sure you're ready to get through this in three turns, right? So we should be okay here if I just do this, this and this. <laughs> Um, in terms of cosmetics, I would highly recommend investing in your damage dealer's weapons, right? So, my trader melee has uh, max weapons here, so and it's really going to help him with his overall damage. Same thing with like Brunhild or whoever you're going to use, right? Purgatory melee, Escanor, like whatever it is, just to make sure you at least, at the very least, invest in their weapon cosmetics because that's going to help you here as well, just increase that damage. So that's floor one. Uh, as you can see, the only real kind of painful phase is that final one. Just make sure you save the right cards for it and you will be sweet. Next we have floor two. So this is the floor where we have either the taunt or death damage piece, which I'll show you guys what I mean. So. You know what? I'm actually going to show... Uh, do I show you guys me getting wiped? Nah, I don't think I do. I'll just show you what you need to do. Um, so we're going to start off the same way. So we're actually going to go two single targets, Escanor card, and then an AoE. 
So the middle part of floor two is yeah, definitely the most annoying. So what you need to do is you need to make sure you have your death ult or your death damage for the second phase of the blue health bar if you're using that setup or at the very least make sure you keep a taunt and have a taunt for the second phase second phase the blue bar right so whether or not you taunt up now to save the rest of your heroes from taking damage and then basically just hope rng gives you one for the next part because he does hit hard there as you see right like my Arthur's is not the most invested in but he's got his holy relic he's got leaving level 90 fully super awakened he's got full ur gear hp defense so this floor, this phase does hit hard. That's the only real gimmick from this one. So I'm going to heal up. I'm going to do that again because I don't want to waste these cards because I want to use them. So you really want to get through this phase with as little use, using as little as little of your good cards as you can because you need to one turn the next phase and then the following phase if you one turn it as well it makes your life a heck of a lot easier. Um, so I'll explain when we get to those two phases. But, yeah, here we're just going to use a couple of... And this is where Red Tamiyo Link really helps um, this Arthur. Because um, that really helps you take that first damage. So as you guys can see, he did bugger all damage just then, right? So it's really only that first turn where he hits really hard. So as long as you can tank that, you should be okay. Alright, so here we're going to do this, this... Um, this... And this, and that should be enough. That's oh, more than more than enough. Alrighty, now time for floor two, phase two. What I was talking about. So this floor has a gimmick where you can only do. I want to say it's a quarter of their. I think it's a quarter, a quarter uh, of the health bar as a damage cap. And then it actually does have, it actually heals a little bit of health at the very end. So you'll get this health bar all the way to zero, and then it'll pop out a little bit of extra health that you then need to kill as well. Because uh, if you see this little red attack above his head, where is it? Here. Equals damage to 3500% of all attack, then restores HP, basically. So this is when attacking enemies use a taunt, right? So you either use a taunt and this, this attack will miss or you kill it before it gets the, this attack off because it'll full heal, wipe your whole team and you're in a lot of trouble, right? So here what we're gonna do, this is where the death ultimate, the, the death um, <laughs> attacks come in, right? So you either need your death ultimate from Freya or from the one, or you need to use um, Escanor here, right? So we're going to do one. Uh, actually, I completely lied to you all, I'm gonna do that. Then I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do, hmm, no, that's that's the wrong way around. So, first attack's going to get me to like here, next attack's going to get me to like here, and then I'm going to do the normal, yeah, okay, so I'm going to do first attack, second attack, third attack, and then another finger, right? So this will drop me to, yeah, there, 30%, 30%. Right, and this gets me to here, and then watch this, the health bar will pop back out. So if you do all four attacks, you'll finish it, and then he'll get his health back. Right, so if he survives there, he wipes your whole team. So that's where the death damage is really, really helpful, and you'll need that to get through. Now, this phase sucks as well. Uh, he has another 30%, I think it is, damage cap, and if you don't kill him on this one, uh, he will bleed you. I think he'll also disable your attack skills. He'll decrease your defense related stats. So this is a really heavy debuff phase. Um, I think you can get away with the first couple, but you need to be careful because basically for the first 30% he'll have a defense related stats increase. For the next 30% he'll have an HP related stats increase, which basically means if you leave him here because his recovery rate is so high he'll full heal. And then the final part is the attack and slash crit damage increase. Right, so he'll hit really hard this final phase. So again, you want to preferably one turn this just to avoid all that problems. Uh, or if you can't one turn it, at least get him to about here. Um, and then he'll still have the defense related stats increase, which is the least, which is like the, the, the chillest one out of all of them. Um, because then otherwise after that he full heals recovery rate and then he does a heck of a lot of damage with an attack. 
All right. So, but again, if you can, just one turn this. So I'm going to do this, 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 and this. So hopefully this will show you guys. So here, that did nothing. Boom. There you go. There's the help. There's the regen. And then this is the attack. There's the attack. Oh, so I'm not going to make it now. So he's probably going to hit me insanely hard because I've stuffed that up. Yeah, there's the crits. Right. And there's the recovery disable and the... There we go. So I now have to restart. Right, because I stuffed that up. I was hoping we were going to be able to survive that, but now I'm going to have to restart. So that's what happens there. So if you don't wipe them in one turn then you need to either deal with the attack or you want to you want to do just the defense related stats is really what you want to do right so as you can see i stuffed that up so i'm gonna have to go again so i won't talk too much about um the the mechanics and stuff again uh just because we've already spoken through it but as you can see that the, those two phases in the middle you really want to one turn if you can um and because I am lazy slash semi suck at editing, I'm just going to quickly run through this with you guys. Uh, if you do need to, if you do just want to skip ahead, feel free. Um, and then we'll get back to that phase again. But this should hopefully not take too long. So as you can see, right, I'm done this bird a million times, and even I still stuff it up. So don't beat yourself up if you do, you know, you do die, or you know, you can't make it, or sometimes card RNG just just stuffs you up right doesn't really matter how you know how impressive your cc is or how built your heroes are it can still really hurt uh, and you can still get st still get stuffed over just by card rng and uh, a few things like that so don't stress don't stress um, there's a difference between card rng and rng stuffing you up and and not being able to actually complete the floor right so Oh, so again, I'm saving my fingers right for the next floor, the next phase, which I didn't really get any, which is a little bit, I kind of want more, I kind of want two if I can help it, ideally. So I'm going to heal up again, I'm just going to get as many cards out the door as I can, um, just to try and get this second finger, just so I can get through the, through the next phase. Oh, and now we hope that we get the second finger. Otherwise, it might be interesting. Yeah, perfect. So, we're going to do that. We're going to do... Uh, let's do... Do I need to do... Yeah, let's do that. That should be more than enough to get us through to that next phase again. So, bear in mind, you've got to one-turn this, or you have to um, have your taunt... Damage cap, this will get rid of ult, which is nice. Oh, it actually did more than I expected it. Go Arthur. Doing his thing. Alright. Little extra health bar, death damage finishes it off. Alright, <laughs> back to the phase I was talking about before. So, we're going to go one, just to really make sure he, he dies here. This is the plan. Alright. It's going to absolutely nuke him. It's probably a waste of a final. So there's the defense stat. Right, increase, there's the regen stat increase, and then here is the attack increase. So he makes you bleed, disables all your recovery skills, and then also um, also stuffs you up a little bit in terms of, you know, obviously the attack it goes through the roof. All right, so nothing really special about this phase, just basically kill him, right? Um, try and proc all your, make sure your health as high as possible going into the final, the final phase. Um, so I'm just gonna do that, that, get as many stacks for melee as I can and then we'll do that, so. Don't think this will be a one turn phase, um, but that's a little bit more realistic, right? Unless you guys really have built up your heroes to a point where you know, you're know 260, 270, 280k plus for your CC. You're not always gonna one turn a lot of phases, so 212 is damage cap there as well, so. All right, so. That is, it's all right. We've got a lot of damage stacks, damage reduction stacks now from melee, which is nice. So I'm gonna heal up 
and then I'm just gonna pretty much finish this here. Uh, again, it's only a one out of six. Um, oh, so it might not be the best, but um, it should hopefully do enough damage that. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. 202. Alrighty. So, final four floor to go. Uh, final phase, final phase, final floor. Um, and we will get stuck into it. So, the first phase of this one, he actually, uh, the bird's actually super tanky. So, really only like your really heavy damage hitters do a lot of damage here, like your Perg Mellies, your Trader Mellies, your Eskinors, all those kind of guys. They're the only ones that really do a decent chunk of damage. So, um, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use... Just basically start off the same way, get some Eskinor passives going, get some Trader Melee passives going, and then I'm going to wait for him to attack me, and then I'm going to use Miguelda's Holy Relic slash her passive to increase all my stats so I actually do some damage. So I wouldn't really recommend using your big heavy hitting cards the first turn, because you just don't have those stacks that you want from Miguelda. Um, honestly, if you've made it this far, you probably already have Miguelda's Holy Relic, like to the third floor. Um, but if you're making it without it, then you're doing a lot better than I did. So just try and basically heal up to full HP, right? Um, as you can see, it does put a blockade on you. Uh, because it's only one debuff, you can cleanse that off if you have Magelda's Holy Relic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm literally just going to absolutely yeet Escanor cards uh, into him. And then follow up with a melee card. There you go, so full heal both of those guys. Um... So that would have done nothing. So as you can see, right, even Escanor is kind of struggling to do damage here. 140k is pretty solid. And then in comes Melee. So that's damage cap. 224, 406 is damage cap for this phase. Um, so that was nice to see. So that was a decent AoE, right? The single targets don't really do it. So single targets and the, and the ults don't really do as much damage on this floor. So don't worry too much if you get ulted. Just make sure you know you're not... You're not about to die, um, and you should be fine. So I'm just going to do this, and that should be enough to kill this Escanor. Silver finger should be plenty. Um, so we're going to do this, and then let's move on to the next phase. So the only thing really about this one is um, is he basically okay? So he has a passive now, which does reflect. Honestly, I don't wouldn't even really worry about it. So the, the weird gimmick on this one is he reflects 25% of the damage back, but he reflects it back before you have your life steal for that attack, if that makes sense. So I'll attack, he'll reflect the damage, but then I'll get the life steal from the damage I just did. So it, it, it honestly, it's never really been a problem for me at all. I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Um, so here I'm just going to... Again, eat a bunch of cards into him. The only thing he really does here, I believe, is skill deletion and removes my ultimate gauge. Um, so that can be kind of annoying, but I like, again, nothing crazy. You just kind of want to brute force your way through this part. Um, the thing for the next phase, so for the purple phase, if you don't have a high damage team, um, you want to save a lot of your damage cards for that phase. And the reason is because we'll get when we get there, you'll see, but each turn that goes by in this phase he'll actually give you a grey debuff where you can't use a specific skill right so you saw all my cards disappear there um, so I'm just going to do one two three I think that'll be enough how much is my damage reduction by what is that 10% still got 22k attack 88k remaining HP Surely we do enough. Surely. You know what, we're going to use that just to get ult anyway, so that'll be fine. Um, yeah, sweet. So we've got the stack as well, which is nice. So, like I was saying, this floor, every turn he'll give you a grey debuff, where he basically makes it so you can't use a certain certain skill anymore. Right, so the first one I think is stances, the second one is like debuff skills, then it's buff skills, then it's attack skills, then it's ultimate moves. Right, so you really want to clear through this floor at the very least. I'd say in two, maybe th Yeah, I'd say two. Two turns if you can, because if you do three turns then he removes buff skills. I think it's maybe it's recovery skills. Either way he gets to a point where he removes all of your skills. Right, so get through this as quickly as possible. Um, I'm going to heal up 
just for some just for fun and then I'm gonna do that 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 so I'd say this is gonna get close to wiping I would say maybe um, no not even close I lied to you all cool so you guys will see here Oh, Melly comes. This is why I love Trader Melly for this, right? Like, I've used Perk Melly here before. Oofed. And he is, he is strong, and he is good. You can definitely use him instead of Trader Melly, but I think Trader Melly, just with all the stat boosts he can end up having through Magelda and, you know, all that kind of stuff, plus the damage reduction, just makes your team so tanky and means he pushes out so much damage. So, um, here he goes. You'll see. Here he goes. He does that. Stance cancel, right? So you can't do any stances. As you can see, it's a gray debuff. So the more he does of this, I think it's like I said, it's like debuff, attack, debuff, uh, buff skills, recovery skills, attack skills, and ultimate moves. So if it takes more than three turns, you're kind of screwed anyway. So clear through this as quickly as you can. Um, so I'm going to do. I'm going to heal up again. I'm going to do that. That. Am I overconfident here? Probably, but we'll see. This is also another good thing about the, the new one Escanor, right? Um, he just... He can't be stat lowered past his basic stats. Yeah, that should be enough. Um, so he's very strong here. Oh, I only just did it. That was a bit too much... Uh, a bit too much faith in those two. Okay, I just got the worst... <laughs> the worst passive for this floor. So the final floor, final phase, you'll get one of, I think it's three. The one that you want is the hand grabbing the knife. It like is like a crit damage one, and that means nothing. The second one you want is basically he just instantly heals 50% when he dies and revives with 50%. That's fine, you just brute force him through. And then this one is, as you can see, removes the hero's debuffs, fully heals their HP, and increases all their stats by 15% when he survives with 25 HP or less. 25% HP or less. So basically get him down to just before 25% HP, and then kill him. Um, he is incredibly annoying if... Like, he's basically not even doable if you leave him above 25%. Uh, or, like, if, sorry, if you get him below 25% and he full heals, he becomes so insanely strong. So I honestly wouldn't recommend doing that at all. I'd recommend getting him to a level... I hope I don't overdo it, actually. Yep, I overdid it. There we go. Okay, so we are going to quickly quit the game. And then we are going to reload in, right? So as soon as you see that full heal happen, close the game, start again, because uh, it's just not worth doing it at that point, right? So um, basically load yourself back in. As long as you can get it before the, uh, the start of his turn, you should be able to start your turn again, right? So it's a little... I suppose it's not a cheat or a hack, it's just basically like they haven't, Nemo will haven't taken it out. It just saves you from basically having to start that whole floor again. Right, so we'll, um, there you go, and it'll pop up with this. The battle was unexpectedly lost. Just press OK and it'll take you back into the battle where you were and where you dropped off, and it'll start you at the start of this turn again. Right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this. How low did he get? I think I'm just going to do... I'm going to do this. The dream is I get another finger, and I make a gold finger, and then we can finish that way. Because, um, yeah, I'm basically... I don't want to drop him below 25% HP. Oh, that was a pretty solid hit from Magelda. So I don't... Yeah, I don't want it... Ah, perfect. Cool. So I don't want it below here. Alright. So... Um, Save it for like a yeah, silver melee card would do as well. Or obviously we've got a gold Escanor card now, which is very nice. So again, Escanor's great for this, right? Because the death damage kicks in before the full heal does. So if I get a to, if I get the bird to like here, it won't full heal. The death damage will then kill, right? Which is super helpful. So I'm going to do this just to get it a bit lower. Uh, and then I'm just going to do this and that should be enough. So I'm just going to use it to get as low as possible. So this is where you've actually got to be like a bit strategic. This might not actually... Surely Eskimo's got... There you go, right? And the death damage kills. So that's why I love bringing Eskimo for that, because that that passive is really annoying, and it has the same passive on the bird. Uh, sorry, on the deer. That doesn't... That is always there. So um, when we get to the deer, I'll show you that as well. But that is a full clear of the bird. 
with all passives explained, team builds, the whole lot. So um, I know it was a very long video, guys. I appreciate it. if you stuck around to the end. I really appreciate it. Throw a comment down below. Um, but hopefully that really does help in terms of returning players, new players, etc. Um, and that was a, a one-shot recording. So I'm glad it went went well. Uh, and uh, again, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did appreciate it, you know, do all the stuff below. would be really grateful. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.